Namaste, Shri Gurubhyo Namaha. A very warm welcome to yet another session of Weekend with Wisdom. Let me begin with a small prayer. Vakratunda Mahakaya Koti Surya Samaprabha Nirvignam Kurume Deva Sarvakarieshu Sarvada Sada Shiva Samarambham Shankaracharya Madhyamam Asmadacharya Paryantam Vande Guru Paramparam Ishvaro Guru Ratmeti Murti Bheda Vibhagine Vyumavatpyapta Dehaya Shri Dakshina Murtaye Namaha Bharati Karuna Patram Bharati Padabhushanam Bharati Padamarudam Bharati Tirtamashre Vidya Vinaya Sampanam Vita Ragam Vivekinam Vande Vedanta Tatvagyam Vidushe Karabharati Shri Gurbhyo Namahari Om Today we have a special guest uh, Swami Chidrupananda Ji who is joining us all the way from Noida. And uh, he is speaking on a very important topic for uh, for spiritual pursuit, namely uh, Shatka Sampati, sh Shamadamadi Shatka Sampati, which is uh, six kinds of wealth uh, in, that is very much needed in spiritual path, without which no uh, spiritual path uh, will be fruitful for one, because irrespective of the kind of path uh, you take, kind of sadhana paddhati you take, is this karma yoga, bhakti yoga, whatever yoga you practice, these uh, six set of spiritual wealth, they are very, very important uh, for, uh, for making uh, true progress. So Swamiji will be uh, speaking more on that. Uh, before I open the floor to Swamiji, I just uh, want to introduce the a very brief introduction to Swamiji for those who don't know. Swami Chidrupananda Ji is the Acharya of Chinmaya Mission Noida. He is, uh, <clears throat> for more than 20 years, uh, he has worked at different roles uh, in Chinmaya Mission at the national level, in the, especially in the youth wing of Chinmaya Mission, such as Secretary General and Director North Zone of All India, Chinmaya Yuva Kendra. And uh, this uh, Chinmaya Yuva Kendra is a youth wing of Chinmaya Mission serving the youth all over India since its inception in 1975. And uh, Swamiji has been touring India, has been speaking, uh, taking classes on Vedanta uh, and uh, engaging with the students uh, for a long time. So it's very, we are very fortunate, Swamiji, uh, to have you here today for this session. Uh, with this very brief comments, uh, I request you to start the session. <clears throat> Thank you, Nitin. Thank you. <clears throat> Oh, oh, oh. Om Shri Ganeshaya Namaha, Om Shri Saraswatya Namaha, Om Shri Gurubhyo Namaha, Om Samastha Janakalyane Neratam Karunamayam, Namami Chinmayam Devam Sadgurum Brahmavidvaram, Sadgurum Brahmavidvaram, Om Sadashiva Samaram Bham Shankaracharya Madhyamam, Asmadacharya Pariyantam Vande Guruparam Param, Shankaram Shankaracharyam Keshavam Badarayanam Sutra Bhasha Kurtau Vande Bhagavantau Punap Punaha Surtis Murti Purananam Alayam Karunalayam Namami Bhagavat Pada Shankaram Loka Shankaram Hariyom, good morning to all of you. Thanks again to Advaita Academy for today's uh, program. They have been doing it uh, twice in a week and then sometimes four lectures or sometimes five lectures like that in a week. 
since couple of years apart from their other programs so today they gave me the opportunity to speak on shatka sampatti shamadi shatka sampatti so today and tomorrow we have two days to speak on this subject and we'll go slowly and steadily and most of you have been students of vedanta so you must have studied you must have heard so for most of you it is going to be a mananam it's only a mananam for most of you all right and mananam is always good together we will study the subject now me and you together now friends the course of evolution of mankind or human being you take is so long path it is so long spread across sometimes even kalpas huge period of time thousand maha yugas etc and in this long spiraling or long you know winding path of spirituality or evolution because of some merits that we have done perhaps consciously or unconsciously in our past lives past lives not as a human being but we have lived some life some evolution nature has pushed us up to animal kingdom the nature has pushed us and up from animal to human being it pushes us so bhagwan shankaracharya begins this shloka in vivek chudamani to get human life is so difficult because we had to go through the so many yonis so many births so after long spiraling path and we don't know that how many lives we have actually lived we have reached this one this life of called human being jantu naam nara janma durlabham right somehow we got it we got the human frame human body and evolution bhagwan shankara charge speaks about it अतः पुंस्व तथो विप्रता तदिकधर्म मग परता विद्वत्म विद्वत्व अस्मात्म दल्टिमेटली से मुक्ति शतजन्मकोटिपुण्यना लभ्यते विदउट दुण्य एक्रूड ओवर मिलियंस ऑफ लाइव liberation is not possible and evolution is very 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 slow indeed very slow in our long path of evolution some life we come across a guru Vijayan Muni says a guru appears out of compassion only. He gives an example of an insect flowing in a river. The river is flowing, and everywhere small small whirlpools are there. So the insect traveling, being swept across by the currents of the river, and at every one meter or two meters, it will it come across. It it encounters a small whirlpool, and it enters in whirlpool, and then makes round two three rounds four five rounds again throws out. the water itself throws that insect out of that whirlpool again it feels that i am now saved again he comes across like that the jeeva also in the samsara sagara has been going through his own journey <clears throat> and out of a compassionate guru somebody saw 
the insect out of compassion he just puts his hand takes that insect out and places it under a tree or on a ground and the insect is so happy and then goes away similarly one in one life the prathama guru if i can say it somewhere in some of our evolution maybe the first guru encounter with a guru some life it would have happened or it happened to all of us beautiful stories are there so many stories are there where life after life the evolution takes place in mahabharata also one story comes with vyasa bhagavan and an insect kitaka story i am not going to tell the story but the crux is that kitaka was you know crossing the road and he stops without crossing and because he hears the chariot wheel sound coming from distance so vyas ji ask why are you standing why don't you cross the road he says no no i am listening to the sounds of the wheels of the chariot coming i will be crushed so i am waiting for the chariot to move then vyas bhagwan says what is the use of that body you have you can drop it i will ensure you you will get a good janma the faith on that mahatma satsang you know vyas bhagwan ke sath because of satsang with bhagwan vyas the kitaka killed himself under the wheels of the coming under the wheel of the chariot and then he becomes another you know a human being and then uh, then next life is little evolved i am not going to give the details for the story next life is still evolved then he becomes a raja kshatriya he remembers his previous life and he wants to give up the kingdom and in search of yasa ji he wanted to go to jungle and meditate because he remembered the entire kitaka story also as i was a kitaka insect then vyas ji appeared and said no nothing doing go back next life you will become a seeker a great seeker you will take birth as a brahma brahmana meaning a life dedicated to spiritual seeking you will take birth as a pure a pure family then he born as like that and he become liberated so bhagwan shankaracharya ji says as you all know this famous verse three things are most difficult one is manushyatvam mamukshatvam mahapurusha samshraya one is to get human birth then again the desire to liberate because bahunam janmanam ante gnanavan mam prapadyate after so many lives a wise man approaches me vasudeva sarvamiti samahatma sudurlabaha and the one who had recognized everything is pure self pure vasudeva mayam idam sarvam jagat everything is nothing but vasudeva only such a mahatma is extremely rare to find on earth so first human life is difficult then a desire to liberation to liberate that's another difficulty and third thing is even after the desire to come under the close shelter of a guru that to srutriya brahmanishta guru is extremely rare indeed extremely rare so when the mahapurusha ashraya samshraya takes place then what does guru makes us understand guru makes us understand this samsara sagaram samsara is like a sagara ocean and it is dukkhamayam and guru shows the mirror to the disciple the, the tragedy that why are you unhappy because we are దుర్వార సంసార దవాగ్ని తప్తం వి ఆర్ బీంగ్ రోస్టెడ్ ఇన్ ద ఫైర్ ఆఫ్ సంసార విత్ ఆల్ ఇట్స్ వేరియస్ ఎక్స్పీరియన్సెస్ సో గురు సేస్ నౌ బిగిన్ యువర్ వర్క్ ఇఫ్ యూ వాంట్ టు లిబరేట్ యు వాంట్ పర్మనెంట్ జాయ్ బిగిన్ యువర్ వర్క్ ద మూమెంట్ గురు టెల్స్ డిసైపల్ you must begin your work now in order to find permanent happiness not the pleasure that we get but we want permanent unbroken bliss avichinna anandarasah 
that unbroken bliss if you want then you must start working upon with your own mind with your mind you must start work so to start seriously our spiritual journey guru says i will tell you everything what is spirituality how to begin your journey what are the potholes or pitfalls in it how to overcome what is the nature of the the progress or what is the nature of the path itself how it is carved out how various uh, forces work against us purva karma etc so i will tell you entire plan but did you resolve yourself have you taken a resolution seriously and sincerely that i want to come out of this samsara forever so then guru gives hands over the shishya says i am ready sir then guru hands over the prescription first to qualify so qualify means what for everywhere there qualification required isn't it for everything we need to be qualified even to eat stomach full of food we must be qualified enough what qualification at least we should have hunger healthy hunger healthy stomach so that i can enjoy food so who is adhikari for eating food one who has good health one who has good hunger he can enjoy food if i am a patient i cannot enjoy food i have to take food as a medicine and that too i may not like many medicines many food types of food i cannot eat what i want what i like so all restrictions will come so to start the journey first and foremost thing is what we must become adhikari a fit recipient a fit qualified student so to get qualification or to get qualified preparation has to be done if you want to go into ias call it to be qualified ips to be qualified to enter into a sports arena to be qualified armed services to be qualified musician you want to sing to be qualified before you give a program even if you have want to take sanyasa the guru will test you guru should see whether you are qualified to take sanyasa or not so everything we need qualification isn't it so in vedanta vedanta begins with this sadhana चतुष्टय संपत्ति द फोर फोल्ड क्वालिफिकेशन वॉट आर दे वी ऑल नो विवेक वैराग्य षट संपत्ति एंड मुमुक्षुत्व दिस फोर क्वालिफिकेशन रिमेम्बर ऑल द फोर हेज टू बी वर्कड अपॉन द माइंड ओनली विद द माइंड ओनली ऑन द माइंड ओनली by the mind on the mind with the mind so actually when you speaking when you really strictly speak about sadhana everything is at mental arena only whole sadhana is what focused upon the mind because one day we have to transcend the mind so mind itself is a big barrier and mind is actually curtain between me and the paramatma so we have to see slowly we will go into the subject so four fold qualifications are mentioned viveka vairagya shat sampatti and mukshatva and all the four are a one unit each complements the other they are not separate and we have no choice 
okay i like uh, second one i like first one i like no we have to get all the four in full measure then only each supplements or fulfill fulfills the other complementing the other each one will try to make the other one also full full in measure viveka vairagya shat sampatti and mumukshatva now the moment we have seen so far what is that because you know mana buddhi chitta ahankara anthakarana is only made up of thought only vrittyatmakam only where the four the inner uh, parts anthakarana inner instruments having four ahankara ego chitta the memory stuff buddhi discriminative faculty and mind and all are made up of what thought only the substance with which they are made up of are thought so when i am addressing all the four inside me i have to work upon that what reduce my ego improve my buddhi and then we not again become egoistic memory has to be used properly and the mind has to be always kept in pure so my focus of work evolution is only on the four mana buddhi chitta ahankar and of the four buddhi is behind the mind so the most the primary culprit is the mind the mind is influenced by and also it has it it influences the other mind is in between like it influences the buddhi and buddhi influences the mind mind is influenced by sense organs and uh, and the outer world and mind also has capacity to influence the sense organs and the outer world so the available product when with us all of us to work upon is the mind mainly buddhi mind both are same because both are only nishayatmika buddhi samshayatmika manaha when the mind the vrittis are in a state of suspension of doubt in doubt is condition it is called mind when vrittis are actually pure calm and then came to a conclusion clarity is improved it is called buddhi so there are all functional names only we can put in 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 another way so when bhagwan krishna spoke same thing to arjuna we have to work up whole bhagavad gita is working on what working on one's own mind everything is depending on my mind full stop my interaction with the world my spiritual progress my understanding everything is depending on my mind all things are boiled down to what mental discipline that's it so when arjuna was asked by krishna please control the mind etc 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 arjuna asked no this question in bhagavad gita chenchalam hi mana krishna pramathi balavad drudam tasya ham nigraham manye vayoriva sudushkaram hey krishna mind is not like an object which i can which i can see and control it with by by my bahubala with my arm strength mind is not like that and what is that mind is chanchalam mind means chanchal restless not only it restless it is restless it is pramathi means what turbulent turbulent so restlessness with turbulence then balavat means what strong very strong when we go in aircraft you know turbulence comes air turbulence we get scared especially new flyers they can't bear it you know they hold on to others passengers or they sometimes they scream they close their eyes they don't know what the hell is happening inside the flight some people vomit turbulence so restless one is restless chanchalam pramathi turbulent strong balavat and drudam drudam means what unyielding 
वो जिद वाला है जिद मीन्स ई जस्ट स्टिक्स टू इट्स ओन पॉइंट इट इट वॉन्ट ईल्ड इट सेज आई एम दिस दैट सेट आई डोंट वॉन्ट टू डू एनी थिंग डू वॉट एवर यू वॉन्ट टू डू एंड दस यर निग्रह how do i i feel that to control such a mind is called is as difficult as to control the wind think as difficult as to control the wind so such is the mind and bhagwan krishna says he nods he said yes you are right without any doubt mind is restless mind is turbulent mind is strong mind is unyielding no doubt about it but he says abhyasa and vairagya are necessary qualifications you have to practice and you must also develop certain detachment non attachment with the world outside then only i can control the mind shamadamadi only i am going to know building now slowly so we have to work upon my mind first of all so before we get into the a small and uh, the the uh, a brief into the viveka vairagya and then very little little but then shat sampat we will elaborate more we before we enter into the topic we must also see general thoughts on the mind because shama dama uparati titiksha shraddha samadhana viveka vairagya All these things are to be done by the mind, within the mind, by ourselves. Okay, just give me a, a half a minute. There's some disturbance is there. Somebody is. I'll just set the disturbance and come back to you. I'm switching off my video and audio just for fifteen seconds. But hold on. yes i am back so little disturbance was there so i just controlled it I told them not to disturb okay now so you see entire sadhana is what on what mind only even the the body also is brought under control only when the mind is under control so the whole center pivot the central pivot is what mind so what is mind now general introduction mind is full of thoughts vrutyatmakam so dashe bhagwan ramana maharshi said yogah chitta vrutti nirodah the patanjali yoga sutra defining what is yoga bhagwan ramana maharshi said this sutra yogah chitta vrutti nirodah is the common first step for all yogas whether you practice bhakti yoga karma yoga gnana yoga raja yoga upasana yoga or any yoga you practice this is the common first step is what i must bring some discipline to my thoughts which are like nigara waterfalls when i close my eyes if i am not i am a seeker of truth or not disciplined i experience what waterfalls like nigara waterfalls a huge flood of thoughts i experience so yoga ha chitta vritti nirodah or first of all disciplining the mind this is what vedanta speaks now we will see now that so what is mind first of all we should see what is mind mind is flow of thoughts vritti pravaha vritti pravaha and you know in vedanta we speak about it how the mind is disturbed by the, the i am not going i'm just mentioning it i'm not explaining much 
so that the jiva is chidabhasa the chidabhasa again goes out into the worldly objects and then takes the shape of the object and then that object is brought into the cognition in my antakkarana the chidabhasa the urti formed in the thought is formed of the object and so therefore this this thought is created in the mind for the particular object the thought of particular object is created and these thoughts are what continuously flowing because my all the objects are entering entering into me through all my sense organs plus also something comes props up from my chitta memory like you know, imagine a frog under a water and in the in the water the frog is not opening its mouth keeping quiet so the water surface level it is calm and quiet but then the frog suddenly opens his mouth immediately the bubble will come so there are so many frogs are inside in the chitta for us each frog is like desire and then they suddenly they prop up they open they signal immediately surface of the mind disturbed so such mind one 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 source of disturbance is from within other source of disturbance is from without so mind is always in turbulence isn't it so when do i get peace only when all the thoughts are removed and what remains is pure consciousness because thought itself is equal to what object plus consciousness so gurudev would say beautiful simple equation vedanta only thought is equal to object plus consciousness so thought minus object is equal to pure consciousness so when all the objects are taken out of the mind in meditation in either dhyasana and what remains is pure consciousness so the mind is flow of thoughts and remember all the thoughts are not uh, in yoga paribhasha klishta and aklishta or you know the so helpful thoughts and troublesome thoughts peaceful thoughts and disturbing thoughts kinds of thoughts are there in broadly divided some are positive some are negative but we are actually disturbed by what more the content is negative mind and then you know the one of the i read in one one of the books as a big subject it is i'm just telling you the it seems on an average unregulated thoughts or self talk the book mentions self talk by an average human being self talk meaning apne aap mein baat karta rehta hai meaning he talks to himself commenting you know, continuously murmuring muttering within the mind chattering say so the such self talks on an average they are 50000 self talks per day it seems the so modern research so this is not easy to bring all kinds of control over the in the mind because you know manu clearly says manu maharaj says what mana eva manushyanam karanam bandha moksha yo very simple statement and it is a universal truth so your mind is your enemy your mind is your friend bhagwan krishna says that mind which is under control that mind becomes your friend and that mind under whom the mind is not under his his or her control that mind to him or her becomes enemy so this mind has to be controlled first control means not suppression to be regulated is a word used by mahatma regulated very many mahatmas use different words to make us understand right so whether it is a viveka whether it is a vairagya whether it is shat sampatti or mokshutva all are actually different um, expressions of seekers expressions in the mind all these qualities are to be worked upon in the mind mind means both mind and intellect put together vrutyatmakam So, Bhagwan Shankaracharya says in Vivekananda, 
येषु सत्स्वेव सन्निष्ठा यद अभावे न सिद्ध्यति only when these viveka vairagya shat sampatti mumukshutva are there present in the seeker's bosom in full measure then only there is a possibility or then there is a experience or understanding what is sat the pure existence the substratum can be recognized realized etc यद अभावे न सिद्ध्यति एंड विदाउट दिस यू कैनॉट गेट द डिजायर्ड फ्रूट नो हियर आई वुड लाइक टू शेयर विथ यू सम ऑफ द थॉट्स ऑफ माय इंटरेक्शन विथ सम ऑफ द द ग्रेट स्पिरिचुअल सीकर्स ग्रेट टीचर्स some of the observations are like this you may agree may not agree doesn't matter but thoughts i am sharing with with them with with you all what i gained in some analysis if you notice in spite of lot of scriptural study in spite of vivek whatever they could gain so vivek and vairagya i use one word can be intellectualized meaning what each word which we have to you know wait very carefully use meaning what i understood theoretically i i understood what is vivek what is vairagya and i need mukshatvam also is there in me yes i wanted to know the truth but i am actually lacking in shamad shatka sampatti these are the things are the actually litmus test for every seeker when he or she is living in the outer world i can analyze what is viveka through shastra brahma satyam jagan mithya all that i can real and unreal discrimination between understood rajju sarpa udaharana or post and ghost example understood or the the what do you call mirage water the sand understood yes understood vairagya very interesting vairagya also understood and in why in some people say that oh i don't believe in other lokas etc they are all mithya but then the question is other lokas are mithya but very carefully some seekers cheat themselves by saying that this is vyavaharika satyam and they, it's because it is vyavaharika satyam it is in the world outer world, this world so i am unable to give up this world i don't have any detachment to this world and it's very tempting so when i use i compromise with certain things in my life then i use that okay it is vyavaharika satyam actually i am i should be honest with to myself and i use that this is a very transactional purposes i am using it etc 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 but then i would say that very easy to give up say that i am not attached to any other loka swarga ityadi because you are actually not experiencing them now so there is nothing great in rejecting the worlds which are not experienced by now by us right now all are superimposed on brahman alone relative worlds very easy to renounce them because i have not experienced it but this physical world which is actually appearing to me out of in my ignorant state as though it is other than me this world i am unable to reject it reject and rejection doesn't mean that you go to jungle you, you wherever you go you are in the world only but here i accept it certain things internally 
I am not hardest to myself. The seeker. So uncompromised. Some people are in the great seekers. Their Mahatmas are. Vyavahar Satyam is true. No doubt about it. But internally, what is that? I am I compromising and utilizing the worldly objects? Or am I really using it as a, a Vyavaharika need and not internally attached or glorifying or became slave to it? Who should decide? One should decide to oneself. Therefore, Bhagavan Shankaracharya says, Yad Abhave na Siddhyati. This is very essential. So, Adav in the beginning, Nitya Anitya Vastu Vivekaha Pariganyate. I am quoting Vivek Chodamani. Iha Amutra Phala Bhoga Viragaha Tadanantaram. Shamadi Shatka Sampatihi Mumukshutvam Itis Putham. This is very clear. What are they? First one is Viveka. Adav Nitya Anitya Vastu Viveka Pariganyate. First one is Viveka. And you know, Viveka is such what the whole life, whether we are spiritual or not, our life, human life, is actually guided by one's own intellect. Huh? Whether that intellect is trained intellect or untrained intellect, hmm? purified or unpurified, sharpened or unsharpened. But all of us, whether a criminal or a seeker of truth or a normal human being or a good human being or a bad person or a criminal, anybody, we are actually guided by our own buddhi. Every moment to moment, buddhi is telling us and mind somewhere, mind may influence the buddhi. Ultimately, the order has to come from buddhi. Interesting here. So mind convinces buddhi and, and makes the buddhi to pass an order. <laughs> Make, uh, you pass an order. Who influenced buddhi sometimes? So buddhi is untrained. Buddhi has no reference. Buddhi has no guide, no teacher, no shastra to refer to. And no experience also to such buddhi. So mind projects and mind convinces the buddhi and buddhi accepts and comes to a decision and passes an order and both mind executes. In some rare cases, I mean, in most of the, not rare cases, in some cases what happens, even though I know that it is wrong, but buddhi is very weak. Buddhi is like a drumstick and mind is like a pumpkin, mota. So, buddhi murmurs in a feeble voice, don't do this. But mind is, is a buddhi starved. Mind is not starving. Mind is very strong and mighty. Mind says to buddhi, shut up, I am going ahead with my own project. And there the problem comes. So therefore, one of the first steps is what? How to make this buddhi stronger? And therefore, I must go come down to the what is the function of buddhi? Viveka, discrimination faculty, discriminative faculty. So, I must empower my buddhi in discrimination. That's it. Because the role of buddhi is discrimination faculty. So, my job is to empower the buddhi. Meaning, empower the discriminative faculty of buddhi. How is it possible? By educating. By education. And no other way, friends, no other way. If I am confused in my buddhi, I want to get educated, I go to a consultant. 
even for regarding worldly matters. So what is the, see, well, why all, there are two types of Viveka. What is the, one type of Viveka discriminative faculty is what? Operational only within the empirical world. Right? In the world, all worldly things to discriminate, I'm using my discrimination. There's a required. Okay. But there I make blunders and I suffer. That's okay. This is part of this world. Other thing is what? Entire this world, which is unreal, appearing as long as I am seeing. It is called Pratiti Kala. Only this Jagat is appearing as long as I am seeing it. <clears throat> it is existing to me as long as I am experiencing it. So within this, between this world and the substratum on which this is projected, because, because what? There cannot be any projected world without any substratum. Niradhishtano Brahma Kochidna Yikshate. Arishtana Rahita Brahma. An illusion without the substratum is impossible. So there must be two things. One is real, other is unreal. Only two things, two categories. So what is the subtlest, purest, highest, noblest discrimination? Not discriminating between chutney and sambar and idli and vada. That is required. That is required for vyavahara. But the real capacity of buddhi is what to discriminate between the real and unreal. Therefore, the preceding one, no, Viveka becomes base for Vairagya and Vairagya becomes base for Shamadama. Is it easy to achieve Shamadamadi and Mumukshitva and also vice versa? Without Shamadamadi, Vairagya is not possible. So everything is complementing each other. It's not that only one way. It's a one unit it is. So, first one is Viveka. Now, how to develop why Viveka? Binu Satsanga, Hoyana Viveka. Tulsi Raja says, without Satsanga, there is no possibility for discriminative faculty to develop. <clears throat> no possibility. So, we have to listen. We have to attend. We have to uh, bathe in the presence of the great spiritual masters or advanced spiritual seekers. We should bathe ourselves, our bathe our mind in the total samasti mind of the satsang. So, what is Viveka first? Brahma Satyam Jagan Mithya. For the which what? The, the teacher has to teach me what is the Brahma Swarupa. How, why it is, uh, when it is not seen, heard, smelled, etc. But how I can, I, my, the, but it must be existing. That is me as a presence only. I cannot deny myself. All that Guru will teach. Nature of the Jagat and what is discrimination, how to discriminate, how to make my Buddhi stronger and subtler. So Viveka becomes a ground for each, the preceding one becomes the ground for the succeeding one. Gurudev, Puja Gurudev, Samshin Mananji, he was a little humorous also in many times. But he wanted to drive a point to us. I share that, that, that um, what Gurudev told in a humorous manner he tells, very humorously. So the general public is, uh, talks that thousands of people sit together and then, so he would give certain very simple thing, but then to drive a point. He says, Gurudev said, one day it seems he was uh, preparing for morning lecture at 7 o'clock. 
So, but he, what preparation means? He was ready for a talk, and then he was waiting for the car to come. He was in first floor in somebody's house, and down the the road, floor is the house down the road, and down bus stop is there. Some bus stop, no bus shelter is not. Bus stop is there. So he didn't know what to do. And the eastern side, the sunrise, sun is rise about to rise. The car has to come to pick him up to the Ajnashala. So Puja Gurudev was thinking, it seems what to do. A lot of time is there. And as he was playing with his fingers, place them, placing them on the window, and suddenly he glanced at, the, at his own nails. He said, oh, my nails have grown, so let me cut it. So he took that nail cutter and started cutting the nail because time was there to, for him to go for a morning talk. He cut the nails, I believe. And then afterwards also he collected all the nails. And then he has to pack it and throw it in a dustbin. But then where he did not find any piece of paper, the gift paper, you know, colored gift papers, normally gold and silver are packed, the colored papers. That paper was lying down, small piece in that small piece. So he took, took that piece and he packed all the nails in that paper. And view because nothing Gurudev said, I had nothing else to do, so I beautifully packed it. I beautifully packed the entire thing, very nicely packed. And still he was holding it and again came to the window and enjoying the uh, morning sunrise. And as he was placing these hands over the window, we had to do the grill, and the arms came, the, the fingers came out, and somehow this packet slipped and fell down. Fell down where bus stop was there. So early morning, one or one only one person came to board the bus. Who was standing there, and he fell down. He did not see it at the fall, but later he saw something is there. The one gentleman came to bus stand and he saw that first person. He saw some beautiful packet. Then he thought it must be something because packed in a, the 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 beautiful uh, wrapper, colored wrapper, normally gold etc. are packed in that. So immediately, Gurudev was to humor said, he took his kerchief, dropped the kerchief on that, and he picked the kerchief along with that inside this one, and he could not resist his temptation. So he would like to know, he wanted to see what is inside. So he started opening layer after layer to see what he got the fortune in the morning. When it completely opened, it was nothing but nails packed. Immediately, he dropped it. Then Gurudev added a pun. He said, no, no, had it been the nails of a young girl, perhaps he would have loved them. But these are the nails of an old Swami. So what is that? He just got it and immediately, instantly dropped it. He threw it out. Then Gurudev says, the world is presenting to us in a beautifully packed manner. Everything is packet available in the form of a packet. So, when a sensible person, Viveki, analyzes this world and sees inside what it is, it will result in Vairagya. Simple thing. What is that in that? It's all temporary. Nothing is permanent. And then it, it makes me addicted to these worldly objects. And then objects will disappear from my um, the perception, loved ones will go, loved things will go away. Even my, I myself will leave the vacate the world. So actually everything ending in tragedy only. So when I recognize that this world is like this, then I understand there's something permanent, substratum, that is me only actually. No difference between Abhinna Vastu it is. So when I recognize that, I am the blissful nature. And this ability to discriminate between the unreal and the real is Viveka. So Tatobhava says, you know, Nitya Nityavastu Ekam Brahma Tad Vitriktam Sarvam Anityam Ayameva Nitya Nityavastu Viveka. Tad Vitriktam Sarvam Anityam. One principle, friends, if I understand, one principle. That everything is, everything is unreal. Nothing is permanent. That when I become conscious of this fact, 
I'm sure I won't be getting caught up in anything. I enjoy. I enjoy means I, I, I'm just living with the world and I understand, I appreciate, etc. All fine, but I will not get caught up. And what is Vairagyam? No. Jihasa, distaste. Darshana Sharvanadi Bihi. Detachment, distaste, lack of any love for this world. That's called Vairagya. Enough of this. I'm fed up. I'm full. There's nothing in this. So, Dehadi Brahma Pariyante hi Anitya Bhoga Vastuni or Bhogya Vastuni. From the body up to Brahma Pariyante, Brahma Loka. So, that's why Vivek Churamani. Uh, somewhere Bhagavan Shankaracharya says, uh, uh, Pindanda Mapi Brahmandam Chedjata Amala Bhandavat. Very like a filthy pot. Pindanda and Brahmanda Chedjata Amala Bhandavat. You just give up all these things, worthy of renunciation, renouncing these two, worthy of dropping, worthy of giving it up. What? Both Brahmanda and Pindanda. Pindanda is the body. Brahmanda is the total universe. As what? As a two filthy pots. Nobody will keep a filthy pot in the house. A pot filled with filth. Brahmanda mapi pindanda mapi brahmandam chajjata malabhanda vata. So, uh, Patanil Maharshi speaks about Paravairagya and Aparavairagya. Paravairagya, Aparavairagya. Aparavairagya is Vairagya toward. So, so many people have developed Aparavairagya, but they may not have developed Paravairagya. Paravairagya is not only to source Swarga Sukham, but also Vairagya towards Siddhis. No, I am not developed Vairagya. I want that Siddhi, I want this Siddhi with me. Somehow attachment, whether gross or subtle, visible or invisible. They say Brahma Pariyante Anitya Bhoga Vastuni. We all should read. Some of you must have read, read it already. Khatopanishad uh, Bhashya Bhagavan Shankaracharya for Urdhumala Vashya come that mantra comes. There, Bhagavan Shankaracharya mentions that the entire samsara vruksha and there are Urdhuloka seven. Adho Sapta Loka, seven, down, down, um, seven uh, the downward Lokas, and all these Lokas are in Samsara Vruksha, tree of Samsara, and all the Lokas are nothing but nests, N-E-S-T, nest need, nests, and each nest may, so many Jeevas are there, headed by one particular Jeeva, in such a Loka, one big bird is there, Brahma Loka, Brahmaji, Brahmaji is in such a bird, is a one bird in Brahma Loka, and like that every Jeevas are there, and Samsara Vaksha occupied by so many Pakshis, and Kalaravaha, chirpling of the birds, and then in Samsara Vaksha, all the Jeevas, as though Bhagavan Shankaracharji had come out of this universe, and witnessing the entire universe as a samsara vruksha and all lokas, urtha lokas and ado lokas and jivas and he, as though he heard the screaming of the each jiva in this samsara vruksha and what each jiva is screaming I believe in pain. What? Muncha muncha iti. Release me, release me, release me. Meaning everyone is silently or loudly screaming. What? For what? Please release me from this torture, from pain, from bondage, from unhappiness, from dukkham. Every soul is constantly speaking it. That means nobody is happy in any way. Anywhere. Tapon Maharaj. Tapon Maharaj is Purja Gurudev Swami Chinmayananji's Guru. Great, great, great Tapaswin. He never came down to plains having reached once Uttarakashi. He would um, uh, meet, meet Swami Shivananji Maharaj of Divine Society in Rushikesh or go back to Uttarakashi or go back to Gangotri or wander in Himalayas. Mahatapasvi, Mahatapasvi, Mahatapasvi. 
ತಪೋನ್ ಪರಮ ವಿರಾಗಿ ಪರಮ ವಿರಾಗಿ ಹಿ ಆಕ್ಚುಲಿ ಡಿಫೈನ್ಡ್ ವೈರಾಗ್ಯ ಶಮ ದಮ ಇನ್ ಇಸ್ ಓನ್ ಯುನಿಕ್ ಮ್ಯಾನರ್ ಇನ್ ಗಂಗಾ ಸ್ತುತಿ ಬುಕ್ ಸೊ ಇದೆ ಭಗವಾನ್ ತಪೋನ್ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ಪರಮಗುರು ತಪೋನ್ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ಸೇಸ್ ಯುಷ್ಮತ್ ಪಾದಾಬ್ಜರತಿರೇವ ವೈರಕ್ತವ್ಯಂ ಅನ್ಯತ್ತದ ಅಖಿಲಂ ಖಲು ಮೋಹ ಸಿದ್ಧಂ ಇಸೇಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ವೈರಾಗ್ಯ ವೈರಾಗ್ಯ ಇಸೇಸ್ ಟು ರೆವೆಲ್ ಇನ್ ಡಿವೋಷನ್ ಇನ್ ಯುವರ್ ಸೇಕ್ರೆಟ್ ಫೀಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಟ್ರೂ ವೈರಾಗ್ಯ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ ಅನ್ಲೆಸ್ ಅನ್ ಅಂಟಲ್ ದಟ್ ರತಿ ಆರ್ ರಕ್ತಿ ಗ್ರೋಸ್ ಇನ್ ಅಸ್ ಟುವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ದ ಫೀಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಪರಿಭಾಷ ಐ ವಿಲ್ ನಾಟ್ ಬಿ ಇನ್ ಎ ಪೊಸಿಷನ್ ಟು ಡೆವಲಪ್ ಎನಿ ಕೈಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ವೈರಾಗ್ಯ ಟುವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಜಗತ್ ವೈ ದ ಬ್ಲಿಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಡಿವೋಷನ್ ದ ಬ್ಲಿಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಮೈ ಕಂಟೆಂಪ್ಲೇಟಿಂಗ್ ಆರ್ ಧ್ಯಾನ ಆನ್ ಈಶ್ವರ ಧ್ಯಾನ is much 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 more and higher and supreme when i come to experience that then alone the true vairagya natural vairagya comes in me from uh, from the world so viveka is a base for vairagya viveka is there it leads to vairagya and vairagyam is there and shamadama becomes easy actually or practice shamadama with the help of the intellect vivek understood shamadama then the more shamadama is practiced more i can get clarity more i get clarity more i develop vairagya okay so so far we have seen certain base but remember entire spiritual journey is what working upon one's own mind full stop nothing else everything is boiled down to what one's own mind an external world what i am speaking about that is also is nothing but ordered by my own karma and vasanas i my vasanas means what the way i reacted i generated vasanas in my past life through my own mind again so we enter now shama dama uparati titiksha shraddha samadha let's see now first one bhagwan shankaracharya speaks about shama in vyakshana he says virajya vishaya vrata dosha drushtya muhur muhuho swalakshye niyata avastha manasa shama uchyate or in tattva bodha it is simply said as what mano nigraha simply said mano nigraha mind control now virajya there is no longing for the sense pleasures vishaya vrata so naturally the mind has to be detached from the external sense pleasures many sense actually not external sense pleasures so sense pleasures are external only so detaching the mind from the sense pleasures virajya vishaya vrata how certain worldly objects our mind withdraws from them comfortably if i had experienced that object and got some pain out of it there may be a earlier experience a strong experience i suffered so i concluded this object is giving me trouble therefore i will never take shelter under this object i will never ever run after this object 
anything it is it could be anything but bhagwan shankaracharya ji giving us a clue sadhana tip how to bring that mind under control mind control doesn't mean mind suppression i am not arresting the mind and putting the mind in a suffocating condition no control means i am regulating the mind mind is been trained training the mind is important so how i do bhagwan shankaracharya ji has given one technique dosha drushtiya mohur mohu again and again see the dosha or faults in the sense pleasures so we have to enumerate what are all the faults in sense world in the sense pleasures first feed them in the buddhi as i said no buddhi has to be fed and buddhi will after teaching the buddhi buddhi will show the mirror to the mind and buddhi will teach the mind so there are three things important friends one is tame the mind first tame the mind cajole the mind when the mind is cajoled or tamed with my own techniques each one of you can employ their own techniques each one of you I many you, you all of you can employ your own techniques cajole in the taming the mind once mind is tamed it is ready to listen to me then i start teaching the mind who will teach the mind buddhi has to teach the mind how will buddhi can teach the mind buddhi has to be empowered through what satsanga shastra shravanam guru upadesham etc will help in buddhi becoming empowering empowered and such an empowered buddhi can in turn teach the mind teach the tamed mind can be taught when the mind training is given sorry teaching is given mind has got that learning very train it's a taught well taught mind that well taught mind uh, if it is exposed to the outer world and that becomes training classroom teaching is over now that mind like you know uh, the a uh, guru teaches the student in an ashram for one month two months after teaching now go into the world and observe your mind how you are reacting how you are um, responding to the worldly challenges how you are being attracted or how, how you are hating certain things how you are loving certain things observe your mind go into the field maidan mein chale jao go into the field so there the practical training has to be given so what is that mohur moho ho again and again i must teach the mind through my buddhi how by showing the mind the faults in the sense pleasures for which remember friends to show the mirror again and again to the mind i must be alert if i am sleepy and not alert at that moment mind will execute its plan and mind will reap the consequences of it later on and suffer and certain times i suffer but i get addicted also can you teach an alcoholic person you uh, you know alcohol is injurious to health so you don't teach me anything i know it nothing new you are teaching me so it's not easy so what kind of doshas are there i must enumerate there are so many doshas are there first one is what okay first one first one is what any sense pleasure is not freely available without effort even to bhoga 
to enjoy a little the depending upon the object of your love but there is an effort required for which first effort then i get the result that's bhogya vastu i will get it i enjoy result i enjoy then after everything every bhogya vastu pleasure eventually ends in dissatisfaction and unhappiness alone why whatever it is even suppose you like it oh it got exhausted i am not fully happy with it i want again that moment you are unhappy or the 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 desired object did not give us the the bliss what i expected so i wanted to again try with little modification in the object of my love add some masala and now taste it that's how you know we construct a house we are not happy again we remodel it again we are not happy again we ultimately you know no i have done three times now i will sell this house and purchase new house again you go to new house they discover a new problem there vairagya is wonderful so again i will try when i get the pleasure i am not happy even though i am happy with that object but then i look up at others and then sometimes i compare oh he has got more then again put efforts and the effort will go away karma phalam is not trans the permanent the phala will go away then leaves me in great sorrow and the same object He is not giving me the same type of joy all the time to me the same person, and same object does not give doesn't give joy to the different people. That means that whether that object has really pleasure or it the it's a play of my mind because same vastu is not giving me the same happiness in different time, or in different time same proportion the happiness is not there happiness is not there or the same object is not giving happiness to different people at different times so you now in all with all these conditions i'll have to ask question is that joy is really in happiness or in my mental modification or mental thought a feeling and same object will give me diminishing happiness and moreover the objects make us a slave and when the object is diminishing or an object is not there restlessness in the mind increases because of my restlessness i cannot focus on any work peace of mind is lost when peace of mind is lost sometime it may it makes me depressed also it takes me to depression then psychosomatic diseases disorders physical disorders all this are all this are all happening in smaller measures but we are not aware of it we will become aware only when something big happens to us but then every moment we are unhappy inside because yeah, master a great master says you are eating the ice cream the ice cream scoop has fell down that moment a great sorrow in the mind why because you know they between the cup and the lip there may be a slip that we forget if i know that till that object comes to my lip and i till i eat it there is no guarantee any time it can be slipped from my hand with that background awareness if i have there is no question of disappointment swam chinmayanand ji says pujya gurudev says disappointment can come only to those who make appointment with future so one technique is given is what be aware of the faults or doshas in the sense pleasures
The question is, you know, how many of us are constantly aware of it? We forget, no? That is why Swami Akhandana Maharaj Kete, great spiritual master, North India, the most, most, uh, some of you might be knowing him, great Mahatma, used to say, Savadhani ka naam hi sadhana hai. What is the name of sadhana? Being alert. Practicing alertness is the name of sadhana. Savadhani ka naam hi sadhana hai. Being alert itself is sadhana. And the sense organs are what? But, but, but why their sense organs are running always after sense pleasures? We, they, we get an answer in Kato Upanishad. Paranchikani vitrunat swayam bohu. Tasmat parang pashyatinantaratman. Kaschit dirha vachyagatmana maikshat avrutta chakshu avrutta michat. The answer is there. Okay, now why sense organs are running? Why this much of struggle for me? Because you know, they are fitted turned outside. They are turned outside, sense organs. It is a design problem. Brahmaji, while when creating all of us, he fitted all the sense organs, turned them outside. So, prang pashyati na antaratma. Therefore, they see only outside. Dhira means what here? One who is intelligent and courageous. Dhira purusha. Meaning one who has got shamadamadi. Shamadamadi guna sampanna yuktaha. One who is endowed with all Shamadama Itsyadi Gunaha, Sad Gunaha, Sadhana, Sampati, he is able to what? Turn the entire sense organs which are turned outside, turn them inside. Turn them inside means, you know, in any investigation you can go. First of all, I wanted to know what is that which is prompting my organs, sense organs to run about, run outside my mind. But why mind is prompting the sense organs to turn outside? I'm running around in the water world. Mind, why mind is leaking through sense organs? Sense organs are fitted outside. Mind is leaking through it. Naturally, mental energy goes out only. But why, why, who is provoking the mind? Avidya, Kama, Karma, Purdaya Granthi. Desire in the Buddhi, then agitation in the mind, etc. So Viveka is required to practice Vairagya and Viveka is required even to know Dosha Drustya Mohur Muhu is the Viveka Shakti. Very essential it is for us. Viveka is required. Therefore, who can do that? Dosha drushtya muhur muhu pariksha. Pariksha means now observe, examine. Pariksha lokan karma chitan brahmana nirveda mayat. Na asti akrutaha krutena tadvignan ardham saha guru meva bhagachet samit panahi surotriyam brahmanishtam. Wonderful. The Upanishad says, you know, a wise man, a brahmana, a seeker of truth. Ex examines the outer world. Dosa drushti. Examines the outer world. He's silently studying everything. Lokan means experiences. Karma chitan means all of these lokas are a result of the karma. Born out of karma. And Nirveda Maya. He develops distaste, vairagi. Because you know, how long you, you can keep on struggling, struggling, struggling to make yourself happy with the sense objects. Karma ayasa vahulya meva. So much of effort, so much of effort, struggle, stress, and strain. The seeker gets a thought now. How long should I do this? He gets a viveka. 
no rajoguna passionate mind and whipping the mind is whipped by rajoguna and then mind is made run on the streets like a dog and hunting for every every kind of food that is available on the street the, the weak mind is like that always on the streets running for food objects na asti akrutah krutena nahi bhaiya what is it i wanted to achieve but that which i am already the bliss 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 i want but that is not outside on a reflecting joy it's a reflected joy i am there's ananda swarupah akrutah there is no effort required to know it is swayam siddha then krutena through karma how can i achieve that which is beyond karma which is swayam siddha swata siddha now i want to know it how to experience it how to drop this entire the samsara mind etc identification with it and how to attain that brahman he goes to guru so shamaha is what ದೋಷ ದೃಷ್ಟಿಯ ಮನೋ ನಿಗ್ರಹ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಒನ್ ಇಸ್ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಕಂಟ್ರೋಲ್ ಇಸ್ ರಿಕ್ವೈರ್ಡ್ ಸೊ ಮಚ್ ಆಫ್ ಟು ಟಾಕ್ ಆನ್ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಯೋಗ ವಾಸಿಷ್ಠ ಯು ಟೇಕ್ ಪುರಾಣಸ್ ಯು ಟೇಕ್ ಉಪನಿಷತ್ಸ್ ಯು ಟೇಕ್ ಇತಿಹಾಸ ಯು ಟೇಕ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಮೆನಿ ಅದರ್ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ಮಹಾತ್ಮ ರಿಟನ್ ಟೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಬುಕ್ಸ್ ಯು ಟೇಕ್ ದಟ್ ಅಲ್ಟಿಮೇಟ್ಲಿ ಆಲ್ ದಿ ಎಂಟೈರ್ ಸ್ಪಿರಿಚುವಲ್ ಲಿಟ್ರೇಚರ್ ಸ್ಪೀಕ್ಸ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ವಾಟ್ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಗೇಮ್ಸ್ how to control the mind how to purify the mind how to um, introspect how to internalize it how to turn that mind within and how to seek the self within how to merge the mind in blissful self how to dissolve the mind in pure consciousness that's it all whole literature is only on that ಜಸೆ ಭಗವಾನ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಸೇಸ್ ಯೋಗಾರೂಢ ತೇವ ಶಮ ಕಾರಣ ಮುಚ್ಚತೆ ಒನ್ಸ್ ಯು ವಾಂಟೆಡ್ ಟು ಕಂಟ್ರೋಲ್ ಇನ್ ಯು ಮೌಂಟೆಡ್ ಅಪಾನ್ ದ ಸ್ಟೀಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಯೋಗ ಮಾಸ್ಟರ್ ಯುವರ್ ಡನ್ ದೆನ್ ವಾಟ್ ಶಮ ಕಾರಣ ಮುಚ್ಚ ವಿತ್ ಡ್ರಾ ಇಲ್ಲ ಇಲ್ವಾ ಮೈಂಡ್ ವಿತ್ ಡ್ರಾ so bhagwan krishna says you know whatever whatever object is disturbing you your mind has to be withdrawn from that respective object shanai shanai uparame buddhya druti grihitaya atma samstam manakrutva nakinchida api chintayet a mind the object number 1 withdraw by teaching the mind telling that you know object number 1 doesn't give you permanent joy so mind with it wrong but mind immediately goes to second second object so i must find out what are all the objects which are disturbing me to which i am my mind is weak so dheere dheere slowly and steadily teaching the mind taming the mind training the mind it's a very slow process it is no hurry no comparison rest all is mahatmas ka no, no, sorry not mahatma everybody rest all is prarabdha of the people somebody gets more money somebody gets name somebody a hey, great mahatma somebody has great following somebody has no following somebody is ekante sukhavashchata somebody is healthy somebody is no health. somebody is rich some mahatma sir absolutely no it's all parabdha that they don't bother about it it's all maya next level game i need not take it anything as seriously some mahatma has got so more aishwarya some mahatma have not got anything but nothing less in their spiritual dimension 
సో ఆత్మ సంస్థం మన కృత సో మైండ్ హ్యాస్ టు బి స్లోలీ స్టడీ విత్డ్రాన్ ఫ్రమ్ ద ఔటర్ ఆబ్జెక్ట్స్ శమహ సో యతో యతో నిశ్చరతి మనశ్చంచలం అస్థిరం తతస్తో నయం అయితే ఆత్మని ఏ వశం నయేత్ సో ఫ్రమ్ వాటర్ వాటర్ వైరాగ్య మెన్ ది ది ఆబ్జెక్ట్ సెన్స్ ఆబ్జెక్ట్ ద మైండ్ వేర్ ఎవర్ ఇట్ ఇస్ అట్రాక్టెడ్ టు ద ఫర్ హోమ్ ద రెస్పెక్టివ్ ఆబ్జెక్ట్ ద మైండ్ హస్ టు బిట్ రాన్ బికాస్ ద వాట్ ఎవర్ వాట్ సో ఐ మస్ట్ స్టడీ ఇన్ మై లైఫ్ వాట్ ఆర్ ఆల్ ఆబ్జెక్ట్స్ ఇన్ మై లైఫ్ డిస్టర్బింగ్ మీ what is that my play my mind is playing with so it is only when vairagya is there meaning vivek and vairagya then mind control and dama indriya control all will become easily so what is mind what shama means then shama means what mental discipline mental discipline now generally we will discuss about shama more what is mind mind is you know kutta 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 like rice boiling you know boiling rice in the not in cooker cooker we cannot see but in a vessel used to put pour water and then then boil and kutta 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 like constantly the mind is my god so continuously generating thoughts non stop business in waking plane it has got completely you know it creates havoc non stop business in waking state is what constantly and dream also projecting 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 in dream in the waking plane suggesting us do this do that to be happy do this to be happy go there to be happy. do this eat this drink this see that phone that fellow baat karo yahan pe jao you go there go here go and meet that person that continuously even in deep sleep vedanta speaks about subtle vrittis are all present so mind means what constantly thoughts and which kinds of thoughts we have to control now please understand there are one is uh, deliberately i initiate thought process for our work i initiate thought process i initiate like you know lecture i am giving today to advaita academy so i have to speak on this subject so i must i would the initiated thought flow within deliberately voluntarily since i have initiated the thought flow voluntarily they don't bind me i am planning a program or i want to solve a particular problem so actually i am thinking i am generating the thinking otherwise is what involuntary thought mere apne aap it's called manorajya in panchadashi language manorajya means what the mind you know throws all kind of, like meditation in meditation only in we don't when meditation do anybody does anybody want to initiate a thought no i want i don't want to initiate any thought meditation is a place where you can find your intention is what to silence the mind but will does that happen no why so many thoughts who is initiating involuntary i know don't know what kind of things i remember what kind of things i recollect what kind of suggestions i get narayana forgotten entities forgotten experiences forgotten people forgotten things i don't want that to happen yet the same memory comes back and so many thoughts gurgle out and appear on the surface of my mind and disturb me 
actually i am in meditation in meditation what i want i want to silence my mind so voluntarily my thought is want to silence my mind but that thought is never cared by the mind mind says i think now you are relatively free i will do my work of pouring out all the dust from the dustbin take out and pour out take out from the dustbin and pour onto the mind this is called absence of shama there we have to control think and initially the intensity of thoughts are so high frequency intensity is so high so high that uh, we can't bear the flood of it that's why there are two types of minds which i speak to the youth very easy way to understand make them understand one is convex mind other is concave mind convex mind is what whenever from buddhi i throw a sankalpa on the mind because mind is a doer executive so i understood um, uh, i make a sankalpa tomorrow morning i will meditate or i will do this parayanam parayanam means part in hindi chanting i do this my mind projected it on my uh, buddhi sankalpa projected it on mind if mind is in concave mind at that moment mind of shapes changing no so so mind is most of the time it is concave concave means concave and what does it do whatever the rays are falling on the lens it they diverge so the moment i suggested my mind please tomorrow morning 4 o'clock i will chant rudram or mahanarayan upanishad or arunam or mahanyasam or taitri upanishad or purusha suktam or lalita sahasranam vishnu sahasranam whatever it is i will chant tomorrow tomorrow is auspicious day i will chant the moment i throw that mind the thought sankalpa on the mind mind diffuses it mind says tomorrow is not required is it necessary to do it why tomorrow why can't you do day after tomorrow why should you go to temple why don't you do it in the house only is there not god in the house but why do you want to chant all those things one day you chant only one or half next day you can chant half so that thought is diffused diluted bifurcated diverged concave mind that's called what voluntary thoughts are disrupted efficiently by the cooked up thoughts by the mind on its own they are called involuntary thoughts mind that's called manorajya swatantrata of the mind suppose my mind is convex mind focusing mind rays converge then at that time what happens the moment i say tomorrow i have to chant this 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 immediately mind says okay then eat less in the night don't sleep get up early morning keep the books ready etc etc mind cooperates and even you made a resolve you forgot during dinner not that you forgot that moment you are not aware suddenly mind makes you remember oh tomorrow you wanting to chant get up go sleep early go go you have to chant tomorrow morning oh alarm put alarm also you have to get up early morning 
chanting is to be done. Please search books also properly. Don't search for books in the morning. Now only you search and keep them on table or in puja room. That's called Shama. So Tapon Maharaj says so beautifully, says Shantihi regarding Shama in his book, uh, Hymn to Ganga, Glory, Ganga Stuti. Shanti Katam Vishaya Lesham Asam Spushanti Chittam Nachetvai Nishaktam Akhanda Murtav Jnanatmike Janani Jahinasute Nisarga Siddha Sadaiva Mananam Manasohi Dharmaha. Shanti Katam Vishaya Lesham Asam Spushanti Chittam That you know, that kind of, how is peace can be attained? That Chittam Asam Prashanti Vishalesham, untouched by the Vishayavastu, Vishaya sense objects. That mind which is untouched by the Vishayavastu objects, that's called peace. How to attain that peace? If otherwise, if not, what? Nachet Tvai Nishaktam Akhanda Murtau Chittam. If the mind is not placed in your Akhanda Murti, in your universal form, O Divine Mother, if your mind is not placed, fixed in your Akhanda Murtau, Nishaktam, Nishaktam is fixed in Akhanda Murtau in the universal form, how is it possible for anybody to get Shama or peace of mind? Shanti, Shanti, Danti, Shama, Dhamma. How is it possible? So, Parvishtaya Tapon Maharaj says, that there is no other sad dosha drushtya muhurumuhu is an effort. Tapon Maharaj gave a little bit higher definition. Muhurumuhu means again and again. What? You should find faults. Is it not effort? Yes, effort. Instead of that, if I generate love, love on the Supreme Lord, automatically mind becomes peaceful. So that's what he says. That, that is how he calls it a Shama. Shama Sadhana is simply generate love for the divinity. How to love, generate love? But Shankaracharya says in Shivananda Lahari, it's like in a Kulya, Upakulya. They are all like, you know, waters of poetry. In the waters of poetry, the flow is there. That's called canals of poetry flowing. Waters of canals of poetry are flowing. From that, take the part of words draw it out with the wheel of the intellect and put that water into the fields of the dry fields of your heart and then the crop of devotion emerges and when that comes in my bosom then what is their worry that i should not i need not worry about any kind of drought dryness famine in my heart o parameshwara when you are there meaning what I must what? I must simply generate. How? By the stories of the Lord. By listening or studying or glories of the Lord. Shankaracharya says, when I develop love, same thing Bhagavan Sriman Tapon Maharaj says, if the mind is fixed upon your universal form, if I can achieve it, automatically Shema takes place. Sadeva mananam manasohi dharmaha. What is the mind dharma? Mind dharma is constantly thinking only. Constantly thinking alone is the function of the mind. That cannot be arrested so easily. Dosha drushtya muhur muhu is a good sadhana. But there is a one thing I find in it is what? There must be an effort. There is an effort again and again to see the fault. How many astos you keep on seeing the falls? There is a little bit tiredness. Instead of that, Mahastras, Shankaracharji or even our Tapomara says that develop devotion, love for your universal form. Let the mind be placed in your universal form. Then automatically mind detached from the outer world. And there's a peace because objects are not gushing in, not gushing into the mind and disturbing the peace of it. So therefore, without cultivating the awareness of divine presence everywhere, 
the mind which is naturally nothing but a thought flow can never discover peace so shama is not possible without discovering the presence of divine chapo tapo maharaj says really it's not possible rest all you can achieve it initial stages we have to to put efforts but effortless shama is achieved only through awareness of divine presence or devotion in bhakti language devotion towards the lord love towards the lord in gnana language awareness of the divine presence so till we achieve this gurudev says we have to consciously practice seeing the presence of divinity everywhere consciously practice here also conscious practice is required otherwise pure love generated because of listening to the stories of the lord then everything whole world is forgotten when my beloved is there whole world is forgotten automatically mind becomes peaceful at the feet of the lord so today i'll conclude here with shama we have seen introduction and shama so tomorrow dama uparati titiksha shraddha samadhanam five things we'll see tomorrow morning thank you very much hari om over to nitin now thank you very much uh, swami ji for a wonderful uh, very very illuminating uh, description of uh, uh, some of the shamadi shatka sampatti obvious if you have any questions you can just put it in the q and a box and uh, uh, swami ji will uh, i will ask the questions to swami ji uh so much one of the questions i as we wait for the viewers question one question i had was uh, <clears throat> uh yeah, in the we have been now seeing the that uh vedanta and yoga there are many areas of overlap and commonalities and one thing i have read is how the practice of yoga i mean the patanjali yoga the ashtanga yoga helps in attaining this uh, shamadamadi uh, uh, qualities because it is uh, related to the control of the mind so can you uh, shed more uh, uh, light on this as well? very very simple nitin very simple here see the first of all fundamentally vedanta and yoga gurudev says very simple yoga is practice right that's a gita yoga shastra he said gita also now in vedanta we speak about shravana manana nididhyasana qualifications required is viveka vairagya shat sampatti mokshutva in yoga paribhasha parallel things are what yama niyama asana pranayama pratyahara prati upa pratyahara uparte se pratyahara and then dharana dhyana samadhi that that path is followed so either way you take up this yoga sadhana follow this and our vedanta you take both are overlapping only there is absolutely no problem actually the difference is sai ishwara vada nirishwara vada or they are not you know that that certain kind of sankhya that ultimately things are little little differences are there but my question is bahar tak jane ke baad na you go that there up to that then, then we can fight out this first of all the path is wonderful no वहां तक तो पहुंच लो पहले यू रीच दट पर्टिकुलर स्टेट देन वी कैन इंक्वायर देन पतिल महर्षि ऑल्सो से वहां तक ई टू कस अप टू दट कईवल्य स्थिति केवल स्थिति एंड देन लेफ्ट देयर आफ्टरवर्ड्स यू विल डिस्कवर दैट माय माय आई एम टीचर अपॉइंटेड फ्रॉम अप टू हियर टू ऑल ऑफ द वर क्वालिफाइड टीचर्स ओनली मास्टर्स ओनली बट देन ईच वन ऑफ देम हैव गिवन गाइडेड अप टू देयर स्टूडेंट्स अप टू सम एक्सटेंट एंड ड्रॉपड देम वी डोंट हैव टू फाइट बट एवरीथिंग इज सो ब्यूटीफुल Uh, this reminds me swami ji of uh, a similar statement by one of the acharyas of shringeri uh, peetam mm. about uh, first reach bhagwan and then you can decide uh, whether he is nirguna saguna whether he is vishnu <laughs> shiva how many hands how many face yeah <laughs> uh, so unnecessarily you know we are struggling on the path road pe baith ke jagda gada kar rahe aage nahi ja rahe koi bhi <laughs> 
I have received one question. I am not really sure. The question is focus on Shakta Durga Saptashati philosophy. Uh, I'm. I don't think this is connected to the topic. Uh, what I am asking very simple thing is that you take that Ishvara as the Ramakrishna also said. Kali, the Brahman in action is Kali. You can worship Shakta Devi, Durga Devi through Shakta Shati. Understand. And then follow that Rakshasa, Rakta Bija, and all, that. all philosophically you can connect Rakta. There are so many thoughts come up. One thought is killed, similar thoughts rise up. So Rakta Bija, Rakshasa, and all. Ultimately, hold on to Divine Mother, do Upasana, purify, then Mother will give you the ultimate experience of the divinity. Absolutely no problem. So, whatever you follow, ultimately, even to do Upasana on Shakti, Shakta also, you must have Shamadamadi Guna Sampati. Any upasana when I wanted to do, I must begin with. That's why I said in the beginning, first thing is work upon the mind. Where you want to apply it, which sadhana, which upasana, doesn't matter. First, get out of these worldly attachments. Okay. Swamiji, the next question we have received is. Yeah, I'm reading, I'm reading it. I'll just read it for, okay, the, read. Uh, okay, yeah, for okay. the audience. Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, Shama needs control of the mind uh, to make it peaceful by transforming it from being conclave to convex. One approach is devotion. So what other practices, approaches can there be to attain Shama? Viveka, Viveka we already seen. Other practices, discrimination, awareness. Awareness is what? Simple thing is that we should be aware that every object, analyze, keep analyzing it. Does it give me permanent joy? Question. Can I be without this object? Can I live with it? Is it absolutely necessary for me? Am I drawn towards it? Am I becoming slave to it? Or am I using it? Utilization is no problem. Am I being slave to it? So, other sadhana, one is devotion, of course, to Lord, as we mentioned very clearly. Other is what? Constant being awareness, applying discriminative faculty, some people apply that. That becomes easy. Everything they don't fall into their prey. They say, no, no, I'll question this. What is this? Is it necessary? What is that? Enquiry. Path of enquiry. Another method is path of enquiry. Uh, Swamiji, we discussed, I think, three paths, right? One is the path of yoga, Patanjali yoga. One is of devotion. And one is of enquiry. So between this path of Patan, uh, Patanjali and the devotion, uh, what is the difference in their approach? Uh, is it of emphasis uh, rather than uh, the technique? Techniques are different, no? Techniques are different. Of course, yoga techniques are different. Devotion technique is different. And then uh, jnana, the techniques are different. First of all, path, the path means technique only here. Path means you can take technique. Techniques are different. And uh, the tasya vachaka pranavaha, Bhagavan, Ishra pranadhana, Patamarsi spoke about it. Ishwara Pranadha surrendered to Ishwara. He also spoke about it. So there's absolute again the match. The devotion is there, no? Ishwara Pranadhanam, Tasya Vachaka Pranava, Jnana, Om Kara Upasana. Ultimate Upanishad speaks about Om only. Sanyasi, or in Om, Om Upasana only is given. Upanishad spoke about it. Tasya Vachaka Pranava, number one. And Ishwara Pranadhanam. Ishwara Pranadhanam is what? Surrender to Lord. Again, the bhakti is brought into. So, you, actually, they overlap. We need not fight. This is what my feeling is. <laughs> Thank you, Swamiji. Uh, we don't have any more questions. Uh, viewers, if you have any questions, now you can ask. Otherwise, tomorrow also, Swamiji will be available. Uh, you can carry on. You can reflect upon today's session and ask questions tomorrow also. <clears throat> Thank you again, uh, Swamiji. Uh, it was a very illuminating session. I think uh, the topic itself is very, very important uh, from a practical perspective. You know, uh, the one thing is to understand the theological, theoretical aspects of Vedanta. The other thing is to have guidance regarding practice on a day-to-day -day basis. So uh, this lecture was very, very illuminating. I, I am sure that uh, many people have deeply benefited uh, from it. Uh, so again, I thank you, Swamiji, uh, for the session. Thank you, Vinitin. May Guru Parampara bless all of us.
Thank you, Swamiji. Uh, viewers, uh, with this, uh, we conclude today's session. Uh, don't forget to join tomorrow, same time. And whatever uh, questions you may have from today also, you can ask tomorrow. Uh, thank you, everyone. Shri Guru Bhyo Namah.